Hey everyone, it's Ben and Ashley again, and we are now on part four of Miranda's story. And this one is focused on family. Now, a lot of you might be in the thick of being chronically ill and just wondering like, how do I handle this with my family, right? Like, how am I supposed to take care of them? You know, how are they supposed to help me through this medical medium lifestyle? Right. So, yeah, you're so sick and it's like maybe you're so sick and you have you can't even get out of bed. And it's like, yeah, I got to take care of this family. And it's like, OK, right. and maybe. maybe your family doesn't agree with the things you're doing. Right. You yeah. know, that makes it even harder. And in Miranda's ca case here, her family embraced it. And so in this video, you're going to get to hear. Miranda's story with her family. It was it was hard. I mean, it definitely was hard. And um, I'm very lucky that I have my mom that lives about 15 minutes away. So if I mean, I relied heavily on her um, and she's been a beautiful help this whole time. Um, and so it was difficult. I mean, <laughs> I remember the first time I could make it down into the basement. I'm like, there was a pile of dirty clothes on the floor. And I was like, oh my god because <laughs> you know, all i was living in were um pajamas and my kids were at the time wore a uniform to school so i didn't realize that all the dirty clothes had my husband's not a great person at doing laundry it's like not his thing you know <laughs> so i think food wise uh you know i would just like the recipes in the book i'm like you just make this for them make that for them and he was you know a a, a, a lifesaver for that and like for me it was just so easy like steamed potatoes like my daughter was like I can never eat a steamed potato again because all I saw you eat were steamed potatoes and peas you know yeah. so that's the joke in the family but it was very difficult I mean I won't lie it's very difficult um you know my son was little at the time so I guess it started when he was probably around six uh and he was sweet about it because he's like I know wherever whenever I need mom I know where she is she's just right there and so he would come and he's very much like very like he likes to be close to mom so he would just come and like sit with me all afternoon and he would like you know read his books or you know i had he did have an electronic device which i was so against right i was so against electronic devices but i was sitting there next to him and i'm like i can't i can't I, I can't get up and i can't play with him and i can't go to the park and i can't do all these things okay. so there are you know allowances I had made during that time, but here we are sitting together watching a show, right? Like I still was able to give him love. He knew where I was. Uh, he still had my support. You know, mom was right there. And, you know, I was still able to give him things he still needed. I couldn't do the lunches or, or whatnot. So that was tricky. And, um, you know, like you said about my husband, we recently did as a family, the simplified 369. So I wanted them to kind of, I wanted, I picked the cleanse that we could do as a family, right? Yeah. So through all this, they have seen that I've healed and, you know, come along quite nicely. And so the kids do celery and the kids do lemon water and the kids do have a melody jack smoothie and they don't eat the no foods and whatnot. But um, we did the simplified 369. So this is also a message to families. You don't all have to be on the same page, right? I was like, I told my, I asked my husband, will you do this with us? And he's like, yes but I still get my like six espresso a day and I still get my club soda all day long. And I'm like, that's fine. You know, like that is good. And you know, if you ask him, well, do you eat like, you know, Miranda does? Yes, because I don't feel like fixing two different meals. Right. So like, it's just easy because we yeah. share cooking responsibilities. Um, it's just easy to do it like that, right? Like why go out and, and do all this stuff? So he's very good even outside the house because he knows I'm like, you know, if you go out there and eat the, no, kidding, I don't judge him like that. <laughs> but you know, I'm like, if you do eat the, the, the no foods, I'm like, I'm gonna have to increase your supplements, you know, like <laughs> who wants that, right? Um, so we did it as a family, you know, we did the three, six, nine, the simplified as a family. It was so funny though, because like on day six, day seven, when those toxins start to come out, we're all grouchy, right? When we're all like, oh, like everything's annoying. We were all on that day together. And my husband's like, I'm fine. And I'm like, you're not fine. <laughs> so it was, it was interesting to go through the detoxing together. And people were like, oh, you know, and I was, I'll be honest, I was kind of arrogant going into the cleanse. I'm like, I eat raw all day until potatoes, right? Like I do 
pretty much the advanced 369 every day, except for potatoes at night. You know, I'm like, I'm not even gonna notice anything. That is so not true. Like the rhythm and the pattern, it gave me such an appreciation for the rhythm of the cleanses and the, the, the minute details of them that I still had detox on day six and day seven, you know? Yeah. So there is so much beauty of like the lesson that I learned going, you know, going and going through that too, where I'm like, wow, you know, and that's how I learned my love for squash was going through that cleanse. Yeah. That's awesome that you guys did that together. Totally. I know we can relate to that too. And we've done the cleanses. Uh, we definitely yeah. hit those days. It's <laughs> It's like day five, day six. It's just like all of a sudden we're not really talking to each other it's as just, much as we do those days. And it's not because we're yeah. like mad at each other, but we know like, okay, day five, day six, there's a lot of detoxing going we on. Get, those days. Yeah, a lot of emotional times. Yeah, like the, you can definitely but tell like days. The energy is off that day. So yeah. we can definitely relate. To, to doing that on the cleanses. Yeah, right? So, it's totally true. I was like, yep. we're just not going to talk for like one day. <laughs> yeah. The kids were all feeling it too, you know, like, but it was cool because I knew what to expect. Like that always happens to me like around that day six. And I knew, so we were all feeling that way. I was like, and I got to read to them, look what's happening. Those viruses are dying off. This is what you're feeling. This is why we want to get it out, right? Yeah. And then- my daughter had come back a couple of days later and she's like, mom, I don't feel as angry anymore. Like, you know, in her, she has a lot of like some, you know, anger and angry liver, we call her. But um, and she's like, I don't feel as, you know, angry or, you know, emotional anymore. I'm like, I know. I'm like, that's, that's awesome. And we've done cleanses together before, you know, me and the kids, the kids and I, but, you know, and so on, like we do a slight modification, like they do the juice day, but then at the end, they'll have some steamed potatoes on day nine. Cause they're like, we, you know, my eight-year-old is like, I just need something to chew, mom. I have to chew something. <laughs> so, you know, we make it work. Like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be exactly like verbatim. You know, I tell people like, do the best you can, right? That's yeah. all we can do. Like do the best and you'll still get something from it. Whatever, whatever amount you can do. If you only do it for a day, because that was my eight-year-old. He's like, well, I'm going to do it for a day. I'm like, all right. So he did it for a day and he's like, well, I'm only gonna do it for two days. And then we made it through the full nine, you know? Cool. And I'm like, well, that's fine. You know, like do, do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but it is fun to do it as a family. And you homeschool your kids, right? Yeah, we think that's really cool because you're teaching them all about medical medium stuff. Yeah, you're incorporating the medical medium information into your curriculum. So that's really awesome that you can sort of incorporate that into the curriculum yeah so last year we started with um so in the we started with life-changing foods we do this one so we go through the food section and we pick different foods and we read them and then we had uh we studied all the angels now this was before the revised edition came out so we have to update for this year but we went through the books and pulled out all the angels just so when the so it's important to me that the children know you know in times of need who do you call for? Like, like Anthony says, you know, you say the, the name of the angel aloud, you try to be kind of in a reverent state and you ask for what you need. And so it's important for me to me for them to know, you know, who is available for them and who's there to support them. Um, but I also want to quickly interject that, you know, if you're a parent Ooh. and you were considering homeschooling, but you're still in that chronic illness phase, I did it from bed for the, when we first started, like it's totally doable. Like, and you don't have, it has not have to look strict like it does in public school, right? Or, or you know, any other kind of schooling system. So we just kind of would lay around and we would do it in my bed. Like we would do language arts. We would read our stories together in bed. And so it doesn't have to be, you know, super regimented. So if there's any parents who are considering homeschooling, they're like, oh my God, how would I do this? You know, I'm still battling my own illness. We do homeschool on the weekends. We do homeschool at the dinner table. We do it doesn't have to be like a, an eight to 3 PM, you know, eight different curriculums or eight different subjects. So it's been a beautiful experience. And it's also been very healing for me because it gives me something else to think about other than how I feel in the exact moment of where we are. Right? Mm -hmm. And this is super important because you're juggling all of these additional things on top of being sick. Well, yeah. While you're healing. 
And I think there's a lot of women out there that really can benefit from this story because women get sick, right? Like they get sick, especially after, right after having a child, a child because their body goes through so much with the pregnancy and then even like the labor and delivery itself is really adrenalizing and the liver's collecting that and then postpartum, you know, cause their body just got hit with all this stuff. And depending on, you know, the um, status of your liver or your health is going to determine how you feel kind of after postpartum. Um, so. And even like pre-pregnancy, like, we took a birthing class and all they told us in that class, the first lesson was all about how you should eat. And I mean, they were telling you to eat like duck liver and they were telling you to eat eggs and protein, dairy, dairy and gluten yeah. and just overload your body with all these fats, which we know, you know, when your liver is overburdened, where does that burden fall? It falls on your child. So by the mama eating all these fattening foods, it is now causing the baby to have liver problems right. immediately after birth or down the road on top of all those interventions that take place when the child is born too. So I think like women are super important, you know, and, and <laughs> they all have a purpose here on this earth and their purpose here on this earth is far more important than anybody else's purpose here on the earth. So, you know, I think it's important that we take care of the women because we want them to be able to take care of their families. Yeah. You know, and I, that's why I think your, your story is so important because you were so sick and you, you found a way to, not only homeschool your kids, but take care of your kids and take care of your family. Yeah, it's very encouraging. And I want to say like, there's so much mom guilt. So for all those moms out there, like mom guilt, that's not of the light, right? The, the mom guilt, that's not something that's like, productive or good. And, and the kids get to learn things. Like my kids know how to do their laundry. You know, my kids know how to cook basic meals now, you know, and before I would have been like, oh, I'll do all that for you, you know, because that's how I was. But going through illness, it, it taught them how to be self-sufficient and, well, more, you know, more, more self-sufficient they could take care of themselves and they know how to do things. So in a way, like it was a blessing that that occurred because they have more confidence in themselves. They have basic cooking skills. They have, you know, laundry skills. They have, you know, they know how to keep their, their stuff put away and tidy because mom's not going around picking it up for them. So there are, there is a lot to say about when that occurs that you can do a lot of good things out of that when you are that mom in bed like that. Um, and, I, and trust me, I get it. Like it's not, it's not ideal at all. I mean, it's not what I would, wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, but you can do some things like that. And, but the mom guilt, you know, I feel you for all those moms out there, the mom guilt is, is like horrid, uh, but it's not, it doesn't do you any good. So you can just, you know, you have my permission to get rid of it. <laughs> right? Totally. Let yeah. it go. Totally. But thank you guys. Yeah. So there you guys have it. There's part four of Miranda's story um, about her family and the whole medical medium lifestyle together. Yeah. And then there's going to be a part five. And this is the last part with, Final. with Miranda. And part five is all about the spiritual side of healing and how that plays a role in your healing journey. All right. We'll see you over there. All right, bye. Bye.